Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about Uncle Tom's Cabin written by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Now before I go into the summary analysis of this novel, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. The novel Uncle Tom Cabin, this novel is very, very significant because um, it helped push along or it helped pave a way for the Civil War, the American Civil War. It really depicted a picture of um, slavery, of African Americans, of um, the struggles that they were going through, of, of how horrific their lives were, um, and, you know, all the things that they had to go through, and how, you know, there are human beings that that just had horrible, horrible, that led horrible, horrible lives, and no one was willing to help them. And this novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, helped a lot of, um, I guess you could say, sympathizers, or a lot of abolitionists, um, believe in, in civil war, believe in changing America from what it was to what it is now um, and to abolish slavery. So the novel begins and we're introduced to Uncle Tom and Uncle Tom is this slave who is um, very religious. He's, he, he's always reading his Bible. He's always praying. He's always hoping on God. No matter what he goes through, um, you know, he, he believes in God. He trusts in God and, you know, his Bible is his best friend. So the beginning of the novel is not too bad. I guess in terms of slavery, Master Shelby, Uncle Tom's owner, um, he doesn't treat his slaves badly or he doesn't abuse them. He treats them, I guess, the most human way that you could treat slaves. He, he makes, makes them work for him. He feeds them. He gives them places to sleep. He's not um, beating them mercilessly or, you know, he just, he's not abusing them as other slave owners would. So Master Shelby, I guess you can say is not a bad guy as compared to the other slave owners that we encounter within the novel. So Uncle Tom has somewhat of a good life at the beginning of a novel and all the slaves are somewhat happy there. They're not free. They're not independent beings, but at least they're not suffering on Master Shelby's farm. Now, Master Shelby and Mrs. Shelby, they both are, are good people. They're not evil individuals. They even raised their son to, to be a good Christian or a good person within the society and, and not, to, not to abuse slaves, basically. And Mrs. Shelby, she basically makes the, a promise to one of the slaves by the name of Eliza that, um, you know, she wouldn't sell Eliza's five-year-old son, which is... A, Eliza's only child. Um, but what happens that really turned things for the worse is that uh, Master Shelby, he's a poor businessman. He's not a good businessman. The, fin the finances of the farm um, are not doing well and he's in a lot of debt. And so because of the fact that he owes a lot of money and he can't pay it back, um, he goes against his code of, of, you know, not treating his slaves badly, of not selling his slaves to horrible owners. Um, so he, he, you know, he betrays that and he sells Uncle Tom and uh, Eliza's five-year-old son. And so, you know, this becomes, this is very, this shocks everybody. Uh, no one expected Uncle Tom to be sold. No one, you know, expected them to be leaving the farm. And Eliza, she, she just loses her mind. Eliza, her and her husband, they have this five-year-old son. Her husband is already a runaway slave. Um, and now she has this big, um, thing that that's placed on her this um you know they're going to take her son away and she doesn't know what to do so within the novel she decides that she's gonna run away with her son to, to the north um through the underground railroad um to save her son to save herself so eliza escapes um during one night and uncle tom is sold and they kind of both go in separate paths within the novel and throughout the novel we we basically follow eliza and we follow uncle tom um, throughout the novel, Uncle Tom is being treated horribly. He gets, um, he, he goes across uh, different states and he's getting beaten. He's getting put up for auction here and there. Um, he gets treated different owners here and there. And the novel really gives you a very dark scene of, of um, slave owners and, and masters treating slaves like cattle, like they're they're worthless, like they're just property. Um, you you see people within the novel give slaves away as gifts. So you know if you know your white cousin 
wants a present for Christmas or if your white cousin wants a present, you're like, I'm going to get him or her a slave so that the slave could do whatever he or she wants. So it's kind of like partially a pet and also uh, someone to wait on you, basically. So it's a very um, sad thing to see. And it's a very dark thing to see the way that um, African-Americans, black people are treated like property within the novel. Um, Uncle Tom, he goes through a hard time. And the thing is, like, he never loses his faith. That's really what's significant within the novel. And the thing that actually makes this novel really good for Civil War or to push Civil War along is that Uncle Tom is depicted and, and shown to be a human being, not just property within the novel. He's kind towards others. He, he helps others. He's an honest individual. Um, he's, he's not, you know, cheating or doing anything wrong. He's just, a, a, an individual that believes in God, no matter what. And he always does the right thing. So no matter what a plantation he goes on, no matter what owner he has, he does right by them. And, you know, he doesn't run away and he does what he's supposed to do. Um, and so you see a good side of Uncle Tom and you see a side of Uncle Tom that you start to root for. And he gets traded from slave owner to slave owner a lot within the novel. Eliza, on the other hand, um, after she escapes from the Shelby farm, um, her life is just it's just run, run, run. Because um, there's a slave owner going after her throughout the novel and she has to escape. Um, she basically finds abolitionists. She finds symp sympathizers that help her along um, her way. So she goes to the Underground Railroad. She just stays at different houses. They give her food. They give her clothes. They try to hide her and her son as best as they can. Eventually what happens is Eliza meets her husband and they they join together with their son and they, they go north together and they keep going through the Underground Railroad together. And it is very difficult, very hard, the things that they go through um, to make it to the north. But they, they actually do within the novel. Um, you do see a lot of horrific scenes. Um, Eliza, she actually does a lot of stunts and um, to get away from slave slave catchers. You know, she, she runs away from them. She hides from them. She, there's a lot of different schemes and different ways that she tries to hide or and she succeeds at it too and eventually by the end of the novel her and her husband and her son they do make it out um and they get to a free state and they, they get their i guess you can say independence or they escape from slavery uncle Tab, on the other hand he gets traded here and there and um he goes to a farm where they actually try to force him to beat other slaves and he doesn't want to his master gets mad at this he gets beaten up and, and beaten to the point of death by other slaves and um so ma both slave masters slave owners and and slaves are um, fighting each other beating each other uh within the novel it's a very grotesque a very it's something that you know it's something that breaks your heart to see what people have to go through, uh, the way that um, black women, African-American, were treated within the novel. It's it's not it's not pleasant whatsoever. By the end of the novel, uh, Uncle Tom, he's pretty much in his deathbed. He's he has nothing left to live for. Um, he never lost his faith, though. That's very significant. That's very important. And he's always no matter who comes before him, he's always kind um, and he's always there to help people. Um, at the end, we see um, Shelby's son. Um, Shelby dies within the novel, and basically the farm is left in the hands of uh, Shelby's son and, and his mother. And the son, actually, he decides to free all the slaves on the Kentucky farm. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a good he's a good individual. He, he wants... Um, he basically wants freedom for the black people or the African-Americans, the, the slaves that were on his farm, and he tries his best to do right by them. So after his father dies, he, um, he gives them their freedom and he goes after Uncle Tom because, you know, everybody didn't want Uncle Tom to be sold. Um, so he goes after Uncle Tom. And um, when he finally finds Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom is basically dead. And it's a very sad scene. To, it's a very... Um, you know, very, very sad, uh, melancholy scene that, you know, that makes you cry, basically, because it's just Uncle Tom didn't deserve what happened to him. Um, he was always an honest man. He's always he always did what's what's right. Um, and he believed in God and he kept his faith until his, he 
died. Um, so the novel basically ends with um, Uncle Tom dying in, by the hands of slavery, by the hands of oppression, by the hands of um, his slave master. Um, and also, you also get this kind of hopeful story of Eliza and her husband and her son making it out of slavery and escaping through the Underground Railroad um, and, you know, having a life for themselves. Um, in terms of the analysis and what's significant about this novel, there, there's a lot. This novel is extremely long and there's a lot that happens. There's a lot of side stories and a lot of um, different characters when you get their backgrounds and we get the horrific thing that, that happens while in their lives. Uh, but one of the central ideas, one of, one of the central things that we get from this novel is that um, slaves are people, you know? Black people are people and they exist, they have emotions, they have feelings, they, you know, they have children and they care about the children just like every other race do. Um, and they ca take care of each other just like every other race do. And they fall in love and they, you know, they have all the emotions, all the feeling, all the expectations, all of the things that every other race have, um, have uh, slaves, African-American slaves, black slaves within America during the era um of the civil war um you know they were people and the book shows us this human part of them um the horrors they were facing how families were being torn apart how people were being treated like property how people were being treated like um they were they weren't worth anything and this novel a lot of people read it when it came out um, and during the time of, of the Civil War, when this novel come, came out and everybody's reading it and from the north to the south and all types of different people are reading it for the first time, they really saw um, the struggles, the plight of African-Americans in America and in the plantations. Remember, uh, when American plantations were going on, when slavery was going on, um, slave owners, they didn't like portray or, or depict, there wasn't... Um, you know, at that time, you didn't have televisions and you didn't have uh, um, the Internet. Um, so basically, everything that was happening in the farms, it was up to the slave master to tell the rest of the country, to tell the rest of the world how they were treating their slaves. And they were, they'll pretty much tell you that, you know, the slaves are happy. They have good lives. We're not mistreating them. And, you know, if the book didn't come out. Um, you wouldn't get the picture or the depiction of the horrors that were taking place in the in the South, um, because the, the farmer, the the masters, the farmers, you know, they're treating these slaves badly. They're treating these people badly, but they're never going to tell them the 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 culture or their culture or the the mass population that um, they're going to tell them that the slaves are being treated wonderfully. They're getting food. They're getting shelter. Um, and they love it. Of course, they're going to say that. Slave masters are going to say that the slaves love being slaves, and there's nothing wrong with that. So the novel helped the American Civil War um, pretty much begin and, and start. It's not the only thing that started the, the Civil War, but it, it really showed a side to slavery that Americans did not want to be a part of. Um, and the other thing is that's really significant um, from my perspective is who Uncle Tom is within uh, the novel. Uh, he never changes himself, no matter what he goes through, no matter, uh, you know, he leaves his family behind. He leaves all his loved ones behind on the Shelby farm. He gets sent into slavery and he doesn't, you know, lash out and start fighting everyone that he sees. You know, he just keeps his faith in God that God will carry him through everything. Uh, and even though he died, even though that he never got back to his family, um, you see that he's a man that believed in God to the, the second he died. Um, and that's very significant. And that's something that if you read this novel, when you go through this novel, you can see that it's, it's something that's going to make a tear roll down your cheek. Um, and it just shows you a really human um, aspect of Uncle Tom that, um, that all humans have and all humans share. So this novel is very significant. It shows you the plight of of black people, of African-Americans during the era of slavery um, and what they had to do to survive and um, become who they are in the 20th century uh, today. So that's my summary analysis of the novel. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.